this. Gasoline powered cars are obsolete and nothing will convince you more of that than, than owning an electric vehicle. And this subtitle here is, just really sums it all up and uh, I should probably revisit this at the end because you'll really see the meaning of it. Electric drive trains, trains simply make more sense and are now more practical and affordable for cars and trucks. A lot of people think that electric vehicles are not affordable yet, but that's because they don't think long, long range. Volkswagen said as much back when they introduced their quote, clean diesel back in uh, 2007. <laughs> this is an excerpt from their newsletter for their, their own customers. It's called VW Driver. I don't subscribe. I've haven't owned a Volkswagen since I was in college. But it says, he, they wrote back then, actually Volkswagen expects that all cars eventually will be electric. That's the current point of view. This is in 2007 they said this. That's the current point of view. For starters, however, clean diesel is the next best alternative. What's the carbon footprint of EVs versus gas cars? Are you just burning coal when you use electricity, assuming that you buy the electricity from say, Xcel Energy, which is 60% coal. Is that right, Steve? About 60, 62? Xcel's come down a little bit. It's just under 60. Yeah. So you might think, well, and, and that was my thought back when, before Steve convinced me that I should buy a Chevy Volt, was I don't want to switch from burning gasoline to burning coal. But the point is that the electric vehicles are so much more efficient in their use of electricity than gas cars are in the use of gas. That's because less than 20% of the power in gasoline goes to propel the vehicle. And the proof of that is the heat that you generate because heat is a form of energy. And the heat that your, your gasoline motor creates is all energy created from that gasoline that was not used to move the vehicle. And then there are other losses. Parasitic losses is uh, one term that's used for it. By comparison, electric cars are 90% efficient. 90% of the energy from the battery is actually going to move the car. There's not as much waste heat and, or losses to drivetrain and so forth. There is no drivetrain in an electric car. You've got a motor with wires connecting it to the battery. That's your crankshaft. There's no crankshaft. And if you have a dual motor car like I do, or a four motor car like the Mercedes created a, a AMG sports car that had a motor for each wheel. And they were all connected to a computer that was and connected to the, to the battery. No drive shafts. Well, here, here's how a standard gasoline powered car uses gasoline. 71 to 75% of it is wasted in heat, exhaust heat, uh, combustion, uh, pumping, friction. Uh, parasitic losses include the water pump, alternator, and so forth. Drivetrain losses, just moving that crankshaft, and then the differential, and then the, the little uh, axles to the wheels. That takes up 4 to 5% of the power in gasoline. And then idling, now they have start-stop technology, but that's only saving 6% because that's the amount of loss you have just from sitting at a red light. And as it says down here with the yellow arrow, 14 to 20% goes to moving the car. Slowing down or going downhill, it gets worse. It's always bothered me that I burn gasoline going downhill. But you do. And, uh, but in an electric car, only an electric car can recapture the power you use to go up the hill when you're coming down the hill, or the power you use gaining speed when you slow down for a traffic light. I did, a, as a case study, I reset my trip odometer in the Tesla at the Genesee exit of I-70 to see, well, how much power will I actually generate and put into the battery going from Genesee exit on I-70 to my office in Golden? Because the, the trip odometer on a Tesla tells you the miles, but it also tells you how much energy you use to go those miles. And it showed, when I got to my office, it showed that I had used minus 1.5 kilowatt hours going from Genesee to my office. That's a one and a half kilowatt hours that I had put back into the battery. That's enough to go another five miles. If my wife had been driving her, the, she, at that time she owned a Lexus, 
LS460, she probably would have burned a quart of gasoline going downhill from Genesee exit to my office. Uh, that would have been about 40 miles per gallon, reasonable for going downhill in a, in a Lexus. But then I had another, I had enough gasoline, enough battery to go another five miles. She would have burned a quart of gasoline going the next five miles at 20 miles per gallon. Only an electric car gives you that. Now, this is the kicker. Electricity is the only energy you and I can create ourselves at home on our roof. And this is my sustainability model. And it's true for Steve and it's true for me. We have enough solar panels on our home and on my office to power our, my home and my office and his home and power our cars. So no gasoline cost, but also no electricity cost. And then when we go cross country in a Tesla, you get free electricity at the superchargers. When I went to Connecticut last year, I had, I, uh, the only cost of going to Connecticut and back was the wear on my tires. If it had been a business trip, however, by the way, I could have deducted 56 cents a mile for going to Connecticut and back, <laughs> which is a nice windfall. I write myself a check from my company each year for $14,000, $15,000 tax-free out of my company to reimburse me the cost of driving for business. I could have deducted it on my tax return, but the way I do it, since I own my own company, is I have my company reimburse me 56 cents a mile. Well, it's a way of getting 56 cents a mile tax-free out of my company. Now, how powerful can electric motors be? You mentioned the golf cart. This is a powerful electric vehicle. You may think that these are diesel locomotives, but they're electric. The diesel motor is only used to generate electricity to run the 12 traction motors, six on each side of that, of that locomotive. Only an electric motor, I don't know why they call it a traction motor, but only an electric motor could move that train. There is no way, there is no transmission diesel engine combination you could use that would take a 110 car coal train from zero miles an hour to one mile an hour. They don't make clutches that do that or transmissions that do that. The only way you can do it is with steam. Steam functions very much like electricity because steam, the, what is, which is what these replaced, like electricity, creates a force on that wheel to get it turning. Same with an electric motor. Got torque from zero RPMs and it just creates a pressure to turn that wheel. You don't need a transmission. Do you like performance? Well, EVs instant torque has become legendary and some of you experienced it today, but EVs aren't new. Back in the 1910s, they were the best selling car. You know what really killed the uh, electric vehicle back then was, the, was an electric motor called the starter. When they created a starter motor and it combined with a six volt battery to start the Model T, and you didn't have to get out and crank it and risk breaking your arm. That's, that's when the electric, the electric car started its decline. Because electric cars are very popular, especially among women. But the trouble was they didn't have the batteries. The lead acid batteries have a low energy density. They're very heavy. They, they degrade quickly. Just like you know, you've replaced the 12 volt battery in your car every four years or so. So they have a, low, a short lifespan, they are slow to recharge, and they have a limited range. That's, so the electric vehicles are not new, electric motors are not new. What's new is the batteries. And the Tesla Gigafactory, is, which is now functioning and generating batteries, is going to bring the cost of electric batteries for, or batteries for electric cars down to $100 per kilowatt hour or less. My car has a 70 kilowatt hour battery. When the price gets down to $100, that battery is going to cost $7,000 to replace. But it, I won't have to pay that because it's guaranteed for eight years unlimited miles. If it dies after 10 years, the cost will probably be even lower. Maybe I'll pay $5,000 to replace my battery after I've driven the car a quarter million miles or more. So what, that raises the question of what is the lifespan of an electric car? of a Tesla specifically. Teslas are 97% are aluminum. There's only 3% of the metal in that car is steel. 
for this, primarily for the suspension, for the, the lower control arms, upper control arms, things like that in the car. They are steel, but the frame and the body are all aluminum. You can't put a magnetic sign on it saying Jim Smith Golden Real Estate. I found that out. <laughs> you have to put decals on it. So, so, uh, so steel rusts, aluminum doesn't rust. The battery can be replaced in two minutes flat once it's on the lift. The motors can be replaced in 15 minutes. You just unbolt them. I don't unbolt them, you don't unbolt them, but the technicians will unbolt them and put in a new motor in 15 minutes. Compare that to replacing a V8 motor that's connected to a radiator, connected to a transmission. <laughs> it's, uh, what's the lifespan of a Tesla? 30 years, 50 years? I mean, really, it's just a matter of obsolescence because maybe they have more features. But now that the Tesla has a lot of the hardware for, for radar and sonar and all, all the rest of those things, cameras and everything, my Tesla is not obsolete now and probably won't be obsolete 10 years from now. They'll just have new software, which is downloaded over the internet to the car while I'm sleeping, that'll add the new features that they create for it. The car, this car has had 10, 10 revisions of software since I bought it a year and a quarter ago. So my white, my white Tesla, which did not, was, came out before they had autopilot hardware, it cannot have that additional features, those additional features that require the cameras and the, the, the radar and so forth, but my red one can. Let's talk affordability. Electric cars are already affordable because of federal and state tax credits. Colorado, you may not know this, but Colorado has the most generous tax credits for electric vehicles of any state in the union. California only gives, what, $2,500 or something. We give $6,000 um, until January when it goes down to five. So early adopters get this benefit, but then again, next year, there'll be cheaper cars. So, so. If you want the tax credit, you, yeah, and you've got to have an income to spend it against, that's one thing. So make sure you have an income to use that credit. Uh, for the federal, but not for the Colorado. Colorado they'll write a check? They'll write a check. Cool. And the cars are getting more affordable every year, just like computers. I mean, these are Silicon Valley products. They get cheaper every year, just like, well, not the iPhone. That's getting more expensive every year, it seems. <laughs> but computers are getting cheaper. This is uh, last year's figures, so they may be a little off. The state, the state tax credit is, is prorated to the size of the battery, I believe. And so you don't get the full $6,000 6, on every car. Uh, so instead of 13500 tax credit for the Volt, you get, as of last year, you got 11899 The new Volt has a bigger battery, so maybe you do get the full 13000 But regardless of those minor differences, the Chevy Volt is basically the size and functionality of a Camry. I had a Camry. To me, it's like a, an electric version or a hybrid version of the Camry. $23,000. My lifetime average is in miles per gallon, and I've driven that car 68,000 miles. Lifetime miles per gallon is 250. His is what, 500, 600? 600 miles per gallon. Yeah, yeah. Well, now that you have a Tesla, you'll never take it on a trip. See, my, my, miles, my lifetime miles per gallon in the Chevy Volt is going up because I use the Tesla whenever I'm at risk of burning gasoline. Because in a Chevy Volt, you only burn gasoline after the first 30 to 50 miles, depending on whether you have the old Volt or the new Volt. And so if, you're, if your trip between charges is only 30 or 40 miles, you'll hardly ever burn gasoline. I, rem I remember on the anniversary of Steve getting his Volt, <laughs> The software in the car started burning gasoline because the Volt won't let you have gasoline that's over a year old. And he, had, he bought his car and he, 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 he was proud of the fact that he was like 1,000, 2,000 miles per gallon. And then after he had it for a year, his... his yeah, it started running the gas motor even though he didn't need it because it wanted to burn off all that old gasoline. Pissed him off. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I didn't have that trouble. Nissan Leaf, again, imagine buying a Nissan Leaf for under $20,000. It's a great car. 
And if you're just using it to commute and you commute to some like place like NREL where you can plug it in at work or Golden Real Estate where you can plug it in at work, even if you're over 40, over 70 miles away, you can go home with a full, full battery as well as, or go to work. So these are just some of the cars that uh, existed last year and there are so many more. Now, this is what people overlook is not just the fuel. Yes, the fuel cost per mile is so much lower because of that efficiency I told you about of electric versus gas motors, you're burning so little fuel, uh, you're burning so little electricity per mile, uh, in whether it's the Leaf or the Volt or the Tesla, pretty much get three to four, maybe five miles if you're really good. I don't know, how many miles per kilowatt hour do you get on your Leaf? 4.1. 4.1, I get three and a half miles per kilowatt hour on my 5,000 pound Tesla. I get three miles, three and a third miles per kilowatt hour in my old Tesla, which doesn't have front, uh, all wheel drive. The all wheel drive Tesla is more efficient than the two wheel drive Tesla. So, what? More efficient. More efficient. Yeah, the, the reason, the, the explanation I heard about why the four wheel drive Tesla gets more, uh, more miles per kilowatt hour than the two wheel drive is that in the four wheel drive, they optimize the front motor for cruising and the back motor for acceleration. Whereas in his Tesla with one motor, the, the rear motor is a, a compromise for acceleration versus cruising. And the computer sends power to the front motor or the back motor, depending on what you're doing, accelerating versus cruising. Very clever. That optimized it. And that's why Tesla is the only all-wheel drive that gets more miles per unit of energy than any other, any gas-powered car on the road. Because keep in mind, a gas-powered car has two drive shafts, one going to the back wheels, one going to the front wheels, or one going to the back wheels if it's got a front-wheel drive. The extra uh, parasitic loss of having all that extra metal to turn and so forth is what makes an all-wheel drive less fuel efficient in a gas car. But in an electric car, all it is is wiring. You've got wires going to this motor, wires going to that motor. So what's the cost per mile of gasoline? It's hard to calculate. It depends on what your miles per gallon are. And unlike an electric car where regardless of the model, it's between three and five miles per kilowatt hour, it can be huge variation between a Hummer and a, and a Prius or, or a subcompact gas-powered car. And it depends on the price of gas. Price of electricity, well, first it's free for Steve and me, but, uh, but Xcel Energy can't raise the price of electricity without a vote of the Public, Service, Public Utilities Commission. Exxon can raise the price of gasoline whenever it wants. So. Hard to predict what the cost, but I would say as a minimum, 10 cents a mile for gasoline. But this is where it makes the difference, is maintenance. I think you should, if you have a gas powered car, you've got a lot of maintenance that might be coming up and you've got to have like a sinking fund for, uh, for these, these kinds of things. You brake work, brakes hardly ever need replacing on an electric car because it generates electricity by slowing down. So I hardly ever touch my brake pedal when I'm in my Tesla because it slows down by itself just from letting off a... Well, I, that's not true in the Tesla. Uh, maybe it's true in the Leaf and it would be a really complicated mechanism that they have, which I don't know how it would work. But in the, they call it regenerative braking, but it does not use the brakes, at least in the Tesla. I don't know about any other car. In the, in the, um, in the Tesla, you let off on the accelerator and the electric motor becomes a generator and the electric motor, the resistance of the electric motor to create electricity is what slows down the car. The motor is slowing down the car and that's called regenerative braking but has nothing to do with brake pads and discs. It's just the electric motor creating resistance when the wheels are going faster than the motor is. Oh yeah. What that does, and then you actually use the brake pads on the brake rollers. Well, when you touch the brake pad, you when you touch the brake pedal, when you do. When you touch the pedal, if it's not a panic, you're only increasing the rigidity braking until you get to a point that it's a panic. 
You sure about that? Yeah. So there is a connection between the brake pedal. It's like the paddles on the new Volt. The new Volt has paddles like uh, Cadillac ELR did where you can, you can, instead of pressing the brake pedal, you hold these paddles and it increases the resistance even more on, on the electric motor. But it's not from touching the brake pedal. But I suppose they could have it so that touching the brake pedal is like, initially is like those paddles. That's the first I've heard of that. You're sure of it? I'm sure up, up to the point. Up to when it where, needs it. it is not okay. Your foot is demanding for slowdown. Okay. One thing that's cool in the Tesla is the brake lights come on when you let off on the accelerator and it's slowing down more than a certain amount. It puts on the brake lights even though you're not touching the brakes to warn people you're slowing down, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, you see it on your dash when it happens. See what on your dash? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It displays the brake lights. It displays your car. If it's a blue car, it's a blue car on your display, which is really kind of cute. And, and it, it shows the brake lights coming on. Um, yep. Um, so most, let's look at these. Brake work, much less in an electric car. Oil change, never. Coolant system, never. Tires, more, but only slightly more. Not really more if you're Steve. He drives like an old lady. Um, <laughs> No ignition system, electrical system. Now you might think an electric car has a bigger electrical system. No, there's a lot more electrical system on a gas powered car because they got to do all this computer work for ignition and for combustion. And you know, when the engine's cold, it has to change the, the, the mixing of gasoline and oxygen and all the rest of that. In an electric car, it's so great. You go out, it could be 20 below zero. You go out, you're gone, you know. You're never not able to start an electric car. Fuel system, we don't have one. Transmission, we don't have one. Exhaust system, we don't have one. Air conditioning, well, a lot of the repairs on air conditioning systems are the air conditioning pump that's driven by a fan belt. All these ancillary systems are driven by electric motors that are just connected to the battery. So the air conditioning system, we have one, but the repair, the repair frequency is probably much less than on a, on a gas-powered car. Three most common gas or diesel engine problems. Engine won't start. Well, we don't have. The reason I'm showing all these possible problems is to, is to remind you of my initial point is you better like be saving about 10 cents a mile uh, for future repairs on a gasoline car. When is, and, and if you're going to buy a used car, buy a used electric car. Because you buy a used gasoline power car, what's going to go first? Is it the transmission? Is it the timing belt? Is it the catalytic converter? Is it, is, it, is it something else? The fuel pump. The fuel pump's inside the gas tank nowadays. That's a big expensive pump to replace. So I know because I just replaced it on my truck. So all these things just do not apply. We don't even have a check engine light on a, an electric car. I guess we do in the Volt because it's got a motor. But think about this, a used Volt is good to buy because the Volt might have 100,000 miles on it, but the engines only run for like five or 10,000 miles at constant, velocity, constant RPMs because it doesn't, it's not related to speed. You're not accelerating. It's just a, it's a gas charging system. It's a gas generator. So used, used Volt or used all battery car is the best car to buy because the battery's good, that's easy to test. The motor seems fine, and it's cheap to replace anyway. So, you, so you're not buying a pig in a poke when you buy an electric car, used electric car. Your transmission is just one piece of your car, but do you have any idea how many pieces make up that one piece? 800. That means that there are 800 things that could go wrong. And when the day comes and something goes wrong with one of those 800 pieces, there's only one place to go, AMCO. Double A, MCO. So the first sentence of that is the key one. 800. That means that there are 800 things that could go wrong. <laughs> this, is, this is the electric motor that's in Steve's car. He has a 350 horsepower motor between the rear wheels on his car. This is also in my white Tesla. That's the size of the motor. It's got one moving part, the rotor. And uh, I had this salesman stand next to it so you get a sense of how big it is. It's small. 
My car has two 170 horsepower motors, one between the front wheels and one between the rear wheels. Here's how you charge a Tesla. You can plug it into 110 volt, that's stupid. If you have 240 volt available, you just plug it into that thing in the middle here. This is the head, which you take off the 110 volt head and, and snap this on to that, and then you can plug it into here. And that's, uh, that's how most of us charge it at 240 volts. It, it at, depending on whether you've got a 30 amp circuit or a 40 amp circuit, it'll add 20 to 30 miles of range per hour of being plugged in. So, whereas the 110 will add like four or five miles of range per hour being plugged in. Here's where all the superchargers are in the country as of when I shot this picture. Now, let's talk safety. This is the frontal end crash of a Tesla. Notice how little damage there is to the main body. You know, in most of these pictures you see of other cars, there's, there's damage to the front door and the windshields breaks and stuff like that. The front of a Tesla, even when it has a front motor in there, is a big crumple zone. It's, uh, and the car is the safest car on the road. Five star on all the tests, and I heard a story, I assume it's true because I've heard it so many times, that the machine that crush, tries to crush the car broke, couldn't crush it. And which is amazing when you think about the fact that the frame on this car is aluminum. But, um, and the side impact, side impact is fatal in most cases for people because the intrusion of a car that T-bones you is about 18 inches typically. On a Tesla, it's six inches. Why? Because the battery, the battery's down here. A hundred and, uh, it's uh, about a 1,200 pound case about this tall. It's underneath the car from the front axle to the back axle. So this is all battery pack in a gas powered car, wall to wall. And that keeps the intrusion from being very great because it adds to the structural solidity of the car in terms of side impact collisions. That's why the intrusion from a side end collision is only six inches. So does the other vehicle have to hit that low on your car? No, because it, the frame is connected to that. I mean, if it, if it only hit that low, it wouldn't intrude at all. It would just push the car because you can't really bend that compartment which is loaded with batteries. 7,000 batteries and 7,000 cells. Um, so no, it's the six inches is because a car, it will hit you above that, but that gives extra support. So I love this picture from Europe of a collision between a Mercedes and a Tesla. You can see the damage to the Tesla is pretty severe, but only in front of the cabin. Uh, the trunk is probably open because they opened it. And meanwhile, the, the Mercedes is engulfed in flames. Every gasoline powered car is a bomb on wheels because every gas tank contains explosive fumes. The gasoline's not explosive, it's the fumes. And any gas tank is not gonna be filled to the brim, so it's gonna have fumes, whether it's a little fumes or a lot of fumes. All you need is one spark to rupture that tank with one spark and you've got an explosion and then the gasoline just feeds the fire. So there's no such, there's no explosive gases in a Tesla. The fires that you've heard about in the past were the result of a five or 10 minute period after a crash where the battery was shorted out and any battery when it shorts out gets hot and then, it, then you have a fire. Am I correct in that? Yeah. Okay. And the one that was the big issue was the truck in front had a three-way ball trailer hitch that fell off and came underneath and poked up and there was warning lights pull over. Yeah, it said pull over, yeah, batter. And, and, uh, and then they did pull over, they got out, but that had a fire. Then immediately, Tesla within two days designed to have the titanium yeah. shield yeah. underneath. And have you, tested it are you sure yours is in place? It, huh? Is yours in place? Because yours was built before that yeah, shield. No, it, yeah, mine was retrofitted. I, yeah. After that accident, I went in and they put in this titanium bar uh, at the front. No, it's not a total shield. Okay. Surprised it was a it was a bar shaped like this, about this big and about this long, that they attached at the front of it that would destroy anything or you know like concrete or something that that hit the front of the battery. After it passes the front of the battery, it's not going to do any damage. This goes without saying, so I won't say it. 
Oh, and by the way, they changed the, they had a software change on the uh, Volt because there was a possibility, and I've done it myself uh, in the past, not anymore because of the software change they made, um, that you have to, especially if you're driving a Tesla where you just get out of the car and the car turns off by itself, there's no on-off switch in a Tesla, I'd get out of the Volt and forget to turn it off because there's no noise, and <laughs> I'd leave it running. Well, as you know, after 40 miles, the gas motor comes on to keep the battery level up, and if you'd parked a car in your garage and it was near low on the battery, 2 a.m., the gas motor might come on to keep the battery charged, and so they, they uh, did a recall where they put in a, an alarm, and if you leave the car uh, and it's running, it blows the horn. It also blows the horn if you, leave, if you turn it off but leave your key in the car, it blows the horn. And um, so that's kind of a nice little safety thing. Um, okay, my advice to you, don't buy a new car. These new gas-powered cars last a long time, 10, 20 years. I hate to see people buy new Jeep Cherokees and new this or new that because five years from now, they're not even going to be making gas-powered cars anymore. And... Um, because think about how much cheaper it is to build an electric car, you know? I mean, it's a, it's a really tedious process putting in an electric motor and a trans... I mean, a gas motor and a transmission and a, a computer to run it and the radiator and the radiator hoses and the fuel system and the exhaust system. It's so much easier to just put in a battery and a motor. The, the, as soon as the price of batteries comes down a little bit more, it's going to be stupid to build a gasoline-powered car anymore, especially when people have fallen in love with the performance and reliability of an electric car. So these, that's why I said the title is Gasoline-Powered Cars Are Obsolete. America just doesn't know it. But you do because you're here. And there are so many cars available now. BYD, is, it stands for Build Your Dreams. It's a Chinese company that Warren Buffett invested in. They are the largest builder of electric cars in the world, but they only sell them in China. Um, Chevy Bolt's coming out this year. All these cars are coming out. The Tesla, the entry level price for the Tesla Model S now is $62,500 for a 60 kilowatt hour battery that goes about as far as my 70 kilowatt hour one does. Now, this is the thing. You need to know that America is far behind other countries in this. As I told you, the Chinese are building more electric cars. In fact, they have 200 manufacturers of electric cars in China, and the government, which is a command economy, is dictating that they're going to choose the 10 companies that can survive, and the other 190 are going to have to go out of business. Couldn't do that in America. But that's, that's how much is being done in China with electric cars. So Spain, these next pictures are from Spain. They have city buses and over-the-road buses and school buses and delivery trucks, box trucks. I wish I could buy one of those for my company. And in uh, Munich, BMW commissioned a, an 18-wheeler. Well, it looks like it has more than 18 wheels. No, it's 18 wheels. Um, this truck is all electric, has about a 60 mile range, but that's enough because this truck's job is to go between the six, among the six BMW factories in Munich, carrying parts and other things from factory to factory. So they commissioned this truck. Minivan, America would love that. These are all Jap uh, Spanish, Spanish made. We have an American-made motorcycle of a Zero brand. It's a very, very nice motorcycle. There are two in Golden, except, no, there's, uh, Dave Miller of Ascendant Title owns two, although one is in, he keeps in his uh, California house. And Tim Haas is moving out of state with his Zero. I own an electric bike, not this brand, but uh, I own an Easy Motion electric bike. Love it. Makes a great police car. The city of Los Angeles, the police department in Los Angeles has purchased a Tesla, and they'll probably purchase a lot more, but the smart thing was to buy one and see how they like it. And taxi cabs in Europe, you'll see a lot of Tesla taxi cabs. See the bottom line, it says there are 167 Tesla Model S taxi cabs in service at the Amsterdam airport. That's a lot of taxi cabs at one airport. 
and Oslo also has taxis. So what are you waiting for? I've shown you that electric cars are powerful and safe, cheap to operate, even cheaper to maintain. The drivetrain on a Tesla at least is warranted for eight years on limited miles, can be fueled for free at home or work or on long trips using the superchargers and will have great resale value.